In our last video, we created some simple button symbols with some animations in the overstate. If you put a movie clip in the overstate, you can create some animations. The problem is you don't have a whole lot of interactivity with that. You can't create an animation that way for when you move your mouse away from the button. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some advanced buttons using movie clips instead of button symbols. These are still going to act as buttons, but they're going to be movie clip symbols. And we've seen a little bit of a hint of using uh, movie clip symbols as buttons uh, in previous videos, but we haven't used them for animation purposes like we're going to do now. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a similar button to what we had in the last video. We'll go to our rectangle tool. Uh, let's turn off the stroke here. And then we'll choose a medium gray for the fill. And then we'll draw in the shape of the background of our button. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the text tool. Uh, make sure you have white for the fill color. And we'll type in our button name. Let's say this is going to be our home button. And uh, it's doing that in gray. So let's change that to white. There we go. Switch to the selection tool and we'll move that text into place. Now later on we might want to create more buttons that are similar to this and notice what happens if we decide to change the text. Once we have it lined up to the left side of the button, if we double click on the text and make it something a lot longer, you'll notice right now it's centered. So when we type in more text, it's extending out to the left and to the right. I'm going to hit escape and control Z a couple times to undo that. Uh, to get around that, if we want this to be left aligned so that when we type in different text, it actually leaves the left edge where it is and moves out to the right, you can select this text field and then make sure that it's aligned to the left. Now if you have your text field centered in the middle of the button, um, then you would also want to center align the text so that when you change the text it would stay centered. But um, uh, this text is left aligned, so um, it's left aligned in the button, so we also want to left align the text within the text field. Okay, so now let's take all of that highlight it, hit F8 to convert it to a symbol. We're going to make it into a movie clip symbol and we'll call this home button and click on OK. So um, we're going to need to access this with ActionScript. Um, this is going to be a lot more complicated than the last button. So if we need to access this movie clip with ActionScript, we need to give it an instance name. So select your movie clip go down to your properties panel and in the instance name text field we're going to call this home underscore MC. Okay now we'll worry about the action script later but for now let's just double click on our movie clip to go into that timeline. Now if you remember our button timeline had a few different states. It had an up, over, down, and hit state. This is going to be similar. We're going to have several states here but we're going to have to create the states ourselves. So in order for this to work, we're going to need a few layers here. We're going to need our first layer with our content on it. We'll create another layer for frame labels. So we'll call this layer labels. And then we'll create another layer on top of that for our action script. And we'll call that one actions. Okay. Now if we go back to layer one, we still have multiple layers of content that we're going to need. Because only our background is going to be animating. We don't want the text to animate, just the background. So I'm going to put the background on its own layer. So I'm going to right click on the background rectangle and we'll click on distribute to layers. And now that's on its own layer. So let's double click on that and call it BG for background. We'll double click on layer one and we'll call it text. Make sure everything's on the right layer. Uh, make sure the actions and labels layers are locked so that we don't accidentally put any content on the stage on those layers. And then we can talk about how to make our different states. And these states are going to contain different animations. Okay, so let's create our, uh, our rollover state for when we hover over the button. So let's create that over here. And you can choose whichever frame you want, but let's create it over here at frame 10. Well, our text isn't going to change at all. So I'm just going to go out to about frame 60 for the text layer and hit F5 to stretch those frames out for our entire... Uh, length of our movie clip here. Now I don't know for sure how many frames this movie clip is going to take out. Um, so if we need to insert or delete some frames for this layer uh, later on we'll do that. Uh, but for the background layer that's where our animation is going to be. So for our background layer if we're going to start our overstate in frame 10 we'll click on frame 10 for the background layer 
and hit F6 to add a new keyframe there. Now in this keyframe we need to select our background and hit F8 to convert it to a movie clip. So we'll just call this button BG. Now we're going to do something a little bit different here. We're not going to go into this button BG movie clip and create an animation within it. Instead, we're going to create our animation here in the home button timeline. So our overstate is going to start here in frame 10. And what we want to do is we want to make this movie clip expand out to the right a little bit, just like we did last time, except we're going to expand the movie clip itself instead of expanding the shape within the movie clip. Uh, so let's say we want it to take eight frames. We'll jump out to frame 18 and we'll hit F6 to add a new keyframe there. And in that new keyframe, we'll simply select our movie clip, hit Q to switch to the free transform tool and start dragging it out. Now you'll notice that as we start dragging it out, it's dragging out the left side of the button as well. We don't want that. So to prevent that, we can hold on to the Alt key or the Option key if you're using a Mac and if we hold on to Alt, you'll notice that we can expand out just the right side of the button. So let's expand it out a few pixels, like so. And if we want to change the color as well, we can also select the button, make sure that you're still in that last keyframe there, and change color from none to either brightness or tint. Let's do brightness just to bring the brightness up a little bit. We'll just drag that up so that the button becomes a little bit brighter. There we go. And then we'll right click anywhere between those two keyframes and create a motion tween. Now last time we created a shape tween, this time we're creating a motion tween. And the difference is we're adding this tween to a button or to a movie clip instead of to a raw shape. So since we're doing this movie or this tween for a movie clip instead of a raw shape, we're going to use a motion tween instead of a shape tween because a shape tween requires a raw shape for it to work. Okay, then with this tween selected, we'll just add our easing here. We'll ease out and we can click and drag across the timeline to see that animation, make sure it looks okay. And there we go. Now once this animates out, we want it to stop right here in the last keyframe. Um, but we also need to add a stop action back here to frame one. Because if we don't add a stop action to frame one, then when we first load our movie, it'll automatically start playing. And we don't want that to happen. We want it to stop in frame one by default. So I'm going to click on frame one for the actions layer, hit F9 to open up our actions, then we'll type in our stop action. Stop, open and close parentheses, semicolon to end your statement. F9 to close your actions, or option F9 if you're using a Mac. Okay, so now we're stopped in frame one, and in frame 10, we're going to start playing this animation, and we're going to need another stop action here in frame 18. Now we could create another keyframe here and then go into the actions for that keyframe and type in another stop action, but there's a much simpler way to, to do this. Um, since we're copying the exact same action script that's in frame one, we can select frame one by clicking on it and then hold on to the alt key or option key if you're using a Mac and click on that, that uh, frame again and drag it out to frame 18. And now we've created an exact copy of that frame in frame one. So now we have another stop action here in frame 18. Very handy. Okay, so now we need some labels here. Uh, in frame one, that's going to be our up state. So we're going to click on frame one for the labels layer, come down here to our properties panel where it says frame label, and we're just going to call this up. We'll just type in up. Then we're going to jump out to frame 10 at the beginning of our rollover animation. And in frame 10, we'll click on that frame for the labels layer, hit F6 to add a new keyframe there. Remember, you can't add labels to a regular frame. You can only add them to a keyframe. So we add a keyframe to frame 10 of our labels layer, and then go down here with that frame selected, and we'll call this over. So whenever we hover over this particular movie clip, we can tell it to jump to the over state and start playing. Now we can't actually see the label just yet, but if we extend our frames out by clicking somewhere out here and hitting F5, we can see that label, like so. Okay, so we have our up and our over state. What about our, uh, our rollout state or our out state? Remember, with a button symbol, you don't have an out state, but we can create whatever states we want because we're dealing with a movie clip here and we can be really flexible with this. So let's jump out to frame, I don't know, frame 20, that'll work and we'll create our out state here. So in frame 20, I'll hit F6 to add a new keyframe there for the labels layer. And then down here for our frame label, we'll type in out. 
Okay, now we're going to create our animation for our out state. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this exact same animation, but we're going to do it in reverse. So let me show you a neat little trick. We're going to highlight all of this, and we're going to copy and paste these frames over here. Now you can do that using the copy paste command, or you can do what we did with the stop actions up here. And then with all of these frames selected, just hold on to the alt key or option key on a Mac and drag this out and make sure that it begins at frame 20. So there we, there we go. We've created the exact same uh, sequence of frames here. The problem is we need these to go in reverse now. So I'm going to highlight these frames again, right click on them, and then we have an option for reverse frames. So now as we click and drag across, we see that it's the exact same animation. It's just in reverse now. So for our overstate, it's expanding out and turning to a lighter shade of gray. And for our out state, it's doing the same thing in reverse. Okay, so we need another stop action at the end of this animation. So let's click on our previous stop action to select it. Then hold on to the Alt key, click on it again, and drag it out to the end of that animation, like so. So now we have a stop action at the end of our out animation. Very good. And we can insert some more frames on our labels layer so that we can see that. And that's basically it. Um, and we really don't even need a stop action here at the end of our out frame because um, this could just loop back to frame one. And uh, it would basically function the exact same way. It would animate out, it would loop back to frame one where it looks exactly like it's supposed to look at the end of the out animation. So we could really just click on that and hit uh, shift F6 to clear that keyframe. And then we'll just delete all of these extra frames on the text layer by highlighting them and click and hitting shift F5 on the keyboard and shift F5 will delete those frames. So now we have our up state with a stop action in it. By default, our button's just going to be sitting there on the stage. When we hover over it, we're going to jump to the overstate and start playing. It's going to expand out and it's going to encounter this stop action. And uh, so as long as we're hovering over this home button, we will see that entire animation. Then when we move our mouse away from the home button, we're going to jump to the out state and it's going to animate out. So we'll take a look at how to create all the functionality for that in ActionScript in the next video. Uh, for now, we have our button set up like we want it. Now all we need to do is to add the action script. So let's save this file, save as, and I'm going to save this as MC button 01.fla. So we'll save that, and in the next video, we'll add our action script.